Hey everyone, my name is Ronak back with another video and in today's video we are going to cover the binary search. So this is going to be your third video in the data structures and algorithms playlist for interview preparation using Python. So let us start by understanding what is searching. Searching is essentially you let's say have an array of certain length and there are let's say some elements. And you want to search an element. Let's say you want to search phi, which is actually located over here. So you have to return the index of the array. So the index index starts from like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. These are the indexes. So your algorithm needs to return your index where the element phi is situated, which is essentially 4. So the typical way you are going to solve this is by using a for loop which runs from let's say i which is going to be 0 to the length of your array and in that it is going to start searching right from the first element all the way to the end uh, all the way to the target like all the way to the end but if you find the target you are going to break out of it okay so let's say if if uh, the element that I am going to search, so in the array, if ith element is equal to equal to the target, I will be returning, let's say the index, so i, else it is going to keep running and in the end if you do not find anything, you are going to return, uh, let's say, minus 1, something like that, okay. So let us now try to code this one. Okay, let us call it linear search. So, linear search is the algorithm that is used in the very initial stages. Okay, because it is linear. If you see over here, this is a very linear process. All of the elements of my array are going to be searched till the end. And whenever it is found, you are going to return it. You are basically going to return your index. So, this is a linear searching algorithm. Now, let us implement this. So here let's say for i in the range of the length of let's say nums but right before that you will have to make the nums so make let us make an array known as nums and let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 exactly the same example that we have taken let us also take it and we will also have to give it a target so let us say target is going to be phi. I want to search if the element phi is present in my array. So for i in the range of it goes from length of the nums and we are going to say that if nums of uh, let's say i is equal to equal to target element I am going to return or I will be printing okay or let us make it a function itself. So let us say def linear search and the parameters it is expecting is going to be your input array and your target and let us take this for loop okay and here it will be array also here array and we have to look for indentation so I am going to return let's say true we will break out of the loop which is going to be very basic and let's say return false if nothing is available. Now let us make an entry point and we will now call our function. So essentially I'll put uh, these two also in my entry point. It will make our it will make our code look little bit cleaner. Okay. And now I'll call my function which is essentially linear search. So I'll print it. It is basically returning a boolean. So linear search and it takes the nums and target. Okay, so target is equal to target and array is equal to nums. And now let us print this. So we will run it. So cd in the binary search and python space linear search dot py. It says true. Now let us intentionally give it an element that is not available. So let us say 9 and it says false. Okay, so we are done with the linear search. But now let us assume that this array is very big. Let's say it is already sorted. 
let's say it is already sorted and it is very very big like let's just say a million samples are there in it in such a scenario do you think going element one by one is an optimized way of searching it not at all because let's say if it is already sorted and let's say my uh, element is let's say 500000 which is 5 lakh so out of 10 lakh samples i cannot go all the way from let's say 1 to 5 lakh i cannot search every single element think about the time that it is going to consume so we require something that is algorithmically efficient so this works in order of n since this is linear since so linear search is linear essentially so the time complexity is order of n but order of n when there is a very very big like when there is a worst case scenario it is not very much efficient i would say so we have to come up with something known as binary search and the time complexity that it takes is going to be order of log n and order of log n is an indication that it is going to be way much lesser so the way we actually work with this algorithm so whenever we talk about binary search let's say you have an array okay some random array and let's say there are some elements okay, four five six seven and eight and now let us say i want to search for six this but the element uh, so the indexes will be again zero one two three four five six and seven so the target if it is supposed to be 6 the index that we will return is going to be 5 in such a scenario what it does is it is not going to go one by one it will use two pointers so this is the reason i have covered two pointers earlier okay so let us call it start and end and it calculates a middle okay so it says do one thing do start plus end and divide them by 2 which will essentially give you a middle element and this middle is very very important okay this middle it is very, very important so if you calculate for this okay so start 0 plus 7 is se so if it say 0 plus 7 by 2, it is 3.5 which is essentially going to be 3 so we al always consider the uh, floor value so for the third index middle is over here let me take a different color pen okay this is my middle in such a scenario then it checks for some conditions now my element that i want to search lies over here which is essentially six now if i know that my value that is my target lies between the middle and end I'm going to forget whatever I have been searching here because now I factually do not require it. If my element directly lies between my middle and the end, why would I search for the earlier elements? I can just skip them. So in such a scenario, what I'll do is I'll say start, I'll change the value of that pointer start to middle plus one. So essentially over here on the fifth, this becomes the new start and this is eliminated so the pointer now points to over here and this middle is now again a new middle will be found so since my now start is actually over here uh, this is pretty much confusing in the diagram so let me again draw it okay, so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so earlier the start was here and the middle that uh, we had calculated was on this position and my end is over here so this is an indication that okay, the element that i now actually want to find is basically this one so if i want to find this one the uh, six over here why would i specifically look for all the earlier elements i can directly take this start and put it over here which is essentially middle plus one 
this case. So this middle also gets erased. Okay, now again I'll calculate the median. Okay, so this is phi. So the index is uh, again this formula is used. Okay, so start plus n divided by two, which is four plus seven divided by two. So this is eleven by two, which is five point five. Essentially, we take the floor value, which is phi. So the fifth over here is going to the middle is going to be over here. Then we check for a base condition that whether my middle okay from area of the middle is equal to equal to the target i directly el eliminate this else again i'll do the same procedure but now let us look at a case where the end also gets calculated i'll show you let us take an example once again 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 something like that and i want to find out the second element okay so the start over here the end is over here initially the middle gets calculated okay so it's going to be 0 plus 5 divided by 2 why because these are the indexes okay so 0 plus 5 so 0 plus 5 divided by 2 which is 5 by 2 which is 2.5 so my middle is going to be 2 okay so this is my middle value and now we check okay so my target is 2 but it is less than my media middle in such a scenario we actually say end is equal to middle minus 1 okay so this gets eliminated and your end actually comes over here and again we recompute the entire thing so this is the way binary search work now if we actually look for the time complexity of this algorithm i had told you that this was order of log n i'll tell you how essentially your loop starts by finding a middle so this middle is n by 2 again you check for the left and right which is n by 2 n 2 n by 2 and here also you will get n by 2 okay n by 2 so this process pretty much repeats itself to a point and when you find the progression for it you are going to get logarithm of n Okay, so this is the way you calculate the time complexity because this procedure will keep repeating itself till the end. Obviously, this is not optimized way, and you actually also perform something in the near future which is DP, but I don't want to confuse you. Okay, so this is the binary search. Now let us write an algorithm for it. Then I'll take an example, and then we will solve it using that example. Okay, so you first initially start with an element. So start and end. Which are your two pointers? So it starts from the zeroth index. Second starts from the length of the array. Okay, so the length of the array that I want to take. So length of array. So this is the true code. Okay, length of array minus one because it is starting from zero. So you get the indexes for array. Then you will find a while loop. So while the start is less than or equal to end. Once the end and start cross each other, you are not going to search because you have already. exhausted every single possibility of searching and now in this scenario you will find the middle element so your middle is going to be start plus end divided by 2 and then you are going to apply if condition so if my middle of the array so array is middle is equal to equal to the target i am going to let's say return the index which is my middle else if array of the middle okay array of the middle is let's say lesser than target okay it is lesser than target i want to perform something if it is lesser than target in such a scenario i am going to say okay so if it is lesser than the target obviously you know that you have to actually add so you are going to say start is equal to middle Plus one. We have already seen this. Else, if the last condition, so essentially you can use else, but I'll still show you. If the array of the middle is greater than our target, in such a scenario, we'll again say end is equal to middle minus one. So this is the way your entire binary search works. Now let us take an example for the better illustration. So now let us take some example. 
let's say one two three four five six seven eight and let's say nine over here so we start okay so start is pointed at zero and ends over here now we calculate for it so this is going to be zero plus uh, eight divided by two which is going to be four so fourth is middle so basically it works on indexes zero one two three four five six seven and eight okay so zero plus eight divided by two which is going to give you four so my fourth element so it will be my middle will be wanted over here and let us say now i the element that i actually want to search is let's say this one third okay third is the element that i want to search which is in such a scenario what you are going to do now i know that so first it calculates the middle so middle over here is your three let me use a highlighter okay so my middle is three okay three is my middle in such a scenario what you are going to do you are going to say so we check for the first condition which is this one if array is equal to, to target no so array of middle which is five is equal to equal to my target no then we move over here which is else if at the middle array of the middle which is five is it less than the target is it less than the target no five is not less than three five is not less than three then we check for the third condition if the array of middle okay if the array of middle which is five is it greater than my target yes so now we are going to use this which is end is going to be middle minus one so middle is on the fourth index okay so it will be three middle minus one so now end is updated end is updated updated end and it points over here so this is your new end three now again the entire procedure repeats itself okay now I am going to erase some of this. Okay, I'll also erase this and this. Okay, so now again you perform it. So again we say zero plus let's say three index two to find the new middle. And now this is going to be one point five, which is essentially going to be one. So now we actually plant the middle over here. Okay, which is one. So now my middle changes. My middle is now element two. My middle, the element is two, but the index is one. Okay, so index is one and element is two. Again, you check for the condition. Does array of the middle equal to equal to target? No. Else if array of the middle, array of the middle is less than the target. So it is going to be two less than the yes so now you update the start okay start is equal to middle plus one so middle was here now this will be updated over here okay so start is now going to be two index is going to be two okay second index so this also again updates okay so you have now these two elements now again you are going to find the middle So essentially, this is one of the most crucial algorithms. Okay, many minutes it is asked. So again, you are now going to say two plus three divided by two, which is essentially going to give you two point five, and we take the floor value which is two. So it points over here. So this is my new middle. So start as well as middle, and now we check for the condition. So array of middle is equal to equal to target. Yes, this time it is true. So three is equal to three, and we return the middle. Which was my index, so the answer will be two. Okay, so this is the way the binary search works. Now let us actually write this in code. So I'll make a new file. Okay, and uh, yeah, so let us try this. Otherwise, I was actually also planning to show you the time, but uh, it is fine. Okay, so df, let us say binary search. And this accepts uh, your input array and your start two elements. And we start, we take the first pointer zero, then we take the end pointer. So two pointers will be used. So length of my array minus one. So now we have the indexes. 
so now okay. while the start so this is my base condition while start is less than or equal to end and if the two pointers cross over each other we are going to end this because we have already exhausted our search so now i'll calculate the middle which is going to be start plus end and divide by two okay so i'll put it like this okay and now i'm going to say if the array of my middle is equal to equal to the target i want to return let's say true else if if the array of my middle is essentially going to be less than the target okay so if it is less than the target i'm going to say start start is equal to middle plus one else it is going to be end is going to be updated okay so if the uh, middle element is greater than that so target minus one and in the end i'm going to say return false and now let us copy the same entry point that we actually took over here so actually makes our work easy and instead of linear search now this is binary search and let us now check for element 9 itself so i'll say python of binary search it says false but now let us take phi it says true okay so it is available so this is your binary search so we have basically implemented our binary search and now uh, what i was planning was to show you the time so okay so let us also try this okay so uh, let's say from time uh, i would say import performance counter and uh, here let us say the performance counter so i'll say start is equal to performance counter and after the execution of the function i am again going to say end is equal to performance counter over here and let us not print this okay because we just want to check the time and i'll print the time okay so i'll say f over here and let's say time taken and i'll say end minus start okay and now let us run this so this is the time taken by it now let us uh, repeat this uh, process for our linear search also and let us check okay so i'll put it over here and instead of uh, this i'll just say linear search okay so i'll also have to import it over here so let's say from time i'm going to import the performance counter and let's see. so if you see the time taken is literally the double okay it is literally the double so our binary search is basically order of log n now let us start by solving some of the lead code questions okay so the first problem itself is basically your binary search essentially so whatever we have implemented over here we have to just now do it over there so it says now we are going to actually return the index all right so let us type it over here itself so let us start by making pointer which is going to be start and end the process is going to be the same so start is from zero end is from the length of my array nums minus one then i'll say while start is less than or equal to end and i'll make a middle okay so that is going to be let's say start plus end divide by two and uh, after that i'll say if the nums of the middle okay the nums of the middle is equal to equal to the target i want to return the middle which is essentially your index else if the nums of the middle is less than the target i am going to say start is equal to middle plus 1 else end is equal to middle minus 1 and in the end if nothing is found i'll say return minus 1 okay so now let us run this and it works okay so pretty easy i would say and now i'll say submit okay it, is, it has been submitted so it says runtime beats 69 users and everything we are done okay so this is very very easy now let us look at the second problem okay so what 
they are saying is so let me write it as problem 2 so let me take a different pen so search in rotated sorted array so you will be given an array where let's say 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 something like this and you will be also given a target element so if you look for it the elements that are starting from 1 over here are sorted and this section is also sorted if you look it from the so there will be a division between them so actually if you take this part and put it over here you will get a entirely sorted array your task is to find the element from such kind of an array now, obviously this problem can be tackled also using something known as cyclic sort but uh, let us now stick to the basics of the searching so starting from this we will use a binary search method obviously you can use a linear search method that you will go element by element and uh, then you can reach the element designated element you want to find but in binary search we are going to apply the typical binary search and we will use the concept of a pivot element this essentially will divide your array into two parts so whatever you have right of the pivot element and whatever you have to left of the pivot element and this pivot element is nothing but your middle so what we are going to do is first we will find the middle and then we are going to check which side of that element to the pivot element is sorted and because once you get a sorted array you can easily do it and now we will write the algorithm for this and then I'll take an example to show you so let us start with the algo algorithm starts by making as usual the start and the end pointers so these pointers are essentially uh, responsible for the uh, your two pointers which will start from the uh, zero and the length the end length of the array then you are going to check why start does not cross the end and then you are going to come up with a solution so typical procedure that we follow will be including uh, let's say the middle element so you will have a middle over here which will be start plus n divided by 2 and now you are going to check it so if that array of the uh, middle is equal to equal to target I am going to return the middle so essentially return the middle element let us call it M now another condition now here the conditions are going to change so I will write else if the second condition states that if the array of the middle or let's say the array of the start is less than or equal to the array of middle I am going to look for a condition okay I will be looking for a condition and another condition will be else if the array of the middle is less than or greater than let's say the array of the end so these two specific conditions will be now checked why because since you have a rotated array like this and let's say you find your middle if to specifically look whether your start is less than middle let us assume that in this example the middle is 1 okay this is your middle and if I want to check if my array with the principle that 6 is going to be less than or equal to 1 it is not okay so this is a typical mathematical principle so this will ensure that I only search for the sorted section of the array otherwise I am not going to work with it so any period of time you check in your particular array there will be always a sorted section now here inside this you will have a nested if so here it says if the array of the start 
is less than or equal to the target and so since the and condition is there both need to be true both of them need to be true and the second condition is that target is less than or equal to the array of the middle this essentially enforces your target to lie between that sorted array if it is not if it is not so uh, actually if this condition satisfy i am going to say middle minus 1 else start is equal to middle plus 1 okay typical binary search scenario second condition states that if i am going to check from the at middle to the array of end in this scenario again there will be a nested loop that actually suggests me that array of the end should be always greater than or equal to the target and okay since the and condition is there both need to be satisfied and second condition is that the target is supposed to be greater than or equal to the array of the middle if this condition is satisfied you are going to update your start which is going to be middle plus 1 else as the end is equal to the middle of minus and then uh, we end it okay so we'll say return minus 1 that's it a uh, minus 1 is the base condition that if none of the elements are found you have to return minus 1 now let us take an example to actually solve this algorithm uh, i'll use a different pen and let us take the uh, earlier example that we were considering so it was 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so this is a rotated sorted array it is sorted as well as it is rotated and now let us set indexes for it 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so first the pointer starts from here the s is over here the start end is over here okay and now middle will be found so middle will be calculated based on this so 0 plus 7 divided by 2 gives you 3.5 the floor value is 3 so the third element is basically the middle now it checks for the condition so let us also select one target because uh, with target you can actually solve this let us select target as 3 so essentially your uh, returned output is supposed to be 5 the index 5 first it checks for the condition if the array of the m the array of the m which is 1 1 is equal to equal to 3 no then it checks for the second condition that if the array of the start that if the array of the start this condition first is checked array of the start which is 6 is lesser than or equal to the array of the middle 1 no so this condition is not used so we move on to this condition if the array of the middle one is less than or equal to the array of end which is 5 yes this is satisfied so we are going to use this condition then it goes in for the nested condition that now if the array of end which is 5 is greater than or equal to the target 3 yes satisfied and so this needs to be true as well as the other one also needs to be true target 3 is greater than or equal to the array of the middle which is 1 yes this is satisfied in this condition i am going to say start is equal to middle plus 1 so essentially my middle is now going to be this the second element and again this process similarly repeats okay uh, i am sorry the middle this is start okay so middle plus 1 so this start is cancelled now since this is your new start you are going to say 4 plus 7 divided by 2 which is 11 and uh, uh, 11 divided by 2 is going to be 5.5 so the floor value is 5 so now it is directly pointing to the the middle is directly pointing so this condition is satisfied okay this one so okay, this is your algorithm now let us write some code for it i hope you might have got the intuition of how it really works okay so it is going to check for the sorted sections of the array every single time and then it is going to give you it directly the output okay so search in rotated sorted array dot py and now let us directly take the uh, solution from here okay 
so now let us start with the start which is essentially going to be zero the end is going to be the length of your nums minus one and this concept i would say is very important the reason why i covered this uh, lead code question is because this will be carry forward this process is usually used every single time of the pivot element in many of the uh, binary search based numericals so now i'll write while loop so while the start is less than or equal to your end this should be running so middle is equal to start plus okay so i want to cover one more condition i'll tell you so start plus end divided by 2 now assume that your middle element that you are calculating like once you add the start and end actually exceed 2 raised to 31 in such a scenario you are going to get an error so there is always an edge case that many of the advanced level uh, companies might ask so you will have to write like this so now you have actually specified a boundary so your start element has some restriction and it is only added when the start is already deducted from the end and the addition is divided by 2. So, so the answer is going to be the same. And now the process remains the same. So nums of the middle is uh, equal to equal to let's say the target. I am going to return the middle. Okay. Else if. Okay. Else if the nums of the start. Our first condition is less than or equal to the nums of the middle. So this is now checking in the left side of your uh, pivot. So if the nums of the start is essentially less than or equal to let's say the target and so and condition is there target is less than or equal to the nums of the middle. In such a scenario I am going to update the end with middle minus 1 else the start is going to be middle plus 1. Second condition is else if the nums of the middle, so essentially you can only write else but I am showing you to for uh, building the better intuition. So nums of the end. And uh, here if the nums of the end is let's say greater than or equal to the target and the target is let's say greater than or equal to the nums of the middle. You will say start is equal to middle plus 1 else end is equal to middle minus 1. So I hope you might have got something idea and return minus 1. And now let us write an entry point for this. So if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore and uh, this is a class so we will have to make let's say an object so i'll say solve for solution and now uh, let us take the lit code example itself of the nums and the target okay we have it and now i'm going to print this so sol dot search takes nums and target Now let us try to run this. So cd in the uh, 0 of 3 and now pi search in rotated sorted. So it gives us 4 which is exactly same. Now let us take this and paste it over our lead code. Try to run it. Okay execution is successful. Now click on submit. Okay, it is successful. So, yes, so this is the algorithm that we are going to use. So, I hope you might have got the explanation about the algorithm. And there are many problems. So, now I will try to include the other problems for you in the repository itself. Okay, so these two main concepts, the basic implementation of the binary search used in the problem where you will have a pivot element is was basically essential so there is also mountain peak and cocoa eating bananas and uh, i would say problems of that nature so we will now uh, what i will do is i might cover matrix in a different aspect okay so i was thinking today to include the matrix in the arrays itself but let us make i would say a single video separately for the matrix okay where you will have 
the searching and sorting required for your arrays so everything will be uh, given to you inside the repository including this and all the files and i hope you might have learned something on the other hand if you do like my content please subscribe to my youtube channel and share with the people who actually require the uh, preparation videos okay so in the next video even i don't know what i'll be covering but most likely i am planning to go with a new data structure because uh, solving array over and over again might be becoming monotonous and you have to be always uh, ready to actually implement the stuff in different directions so i'll see to it okay so before directly hopping over to the let's say sliding window or the matrices we will look at a new data structure okay so i hope you might have learned something on the other and uh, this is the end of the video so thank you for watching goodbye